And I got to this point where I'm thinking, like, I've lost everything. Everything. I've lost every piece of what made this guy this guy. The identity was completely stripped away. And you already see the level of my life. I was going to figure out, like, who the hell am I? I'm the, I'm the black kid that, that's like an Oreo, that's in the white family, that's like a decent athlete, not a decent athlete, that, that's married. I have a kid in college, like all this weird stuff going on. And like, I don't know who I am. And then I come home and everything I thought I was was now gone. I get to this point where literally like I'm just, I'm empty, like this screen. And I remember at this moment in time where like I had this fog and I just had this pain. The brain can't always distinguish between physical and emotional pain, unfortunately. So when I have that physical, like that like emotional, mental pain, like it feels like I can't breathe and I can't think and it just hurts and I want to stop. But I legit, I just drive off one day and I send a text to my, my friends and to my wife at the time. And I said, please tell my children who their father was. Like I didn't know what to do. So I drove off and, I, and, and thankfully it was late enough at night, to be honest, I was out looking for rat poison uh, the stores happened to be closed. Thankfully, I parked the car in Stockton, California, and I sat there, and GPS found me. The cops found me. At this time, like, I was kind of like, it snapped out of it. I was kind of like figuring things out, and I had this, this weighted fog. Who's been in that fog before? Pain, like, the bills can't get paid. Yeah, things aren't going right. Like, I had this fog, and it just stayed on me. And I remember this weight just kind of sat for, like, honestly, about a, a year and a half, almost two years. And I went through the motions. We've gone through the motions. And I get all shift, like, gone through the motions. Right, I don't know what it feels like. I don't know what to do. Like, it's just this weight. And then I remember I had this moment in time. It was uh, April 2014, April 15th. And I'm sitting in this hospital. Um, beautiful day outside, spring day in the hospital. It's me, my dad, uh, my grandma, and my mom. And I'm sitting there. And what ends up happening, it was interesting. Because yesterday, uh, E.T. talked about his wife and MS. And when I was 14, when I actually got adopted, my mom was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And so I'm in a situation where now I'm sitting here watching in a room with my mom in a bed, my dad on her left side, my grandma on her left side, and me on her right side holding her right hand. We're watching this heart rate monitor. And you just see it just beating like the heart you hear. And then it got slower. And what ended up happening, to get to this point, we're all watching each other, and they took her off of a life support kind of situation. And we just watched her taking her breaths and breathing just in and out, in and out. And then we saw it get more labored. And then my dad and I, we locked eyes, and I'm like, we realized, like, this is that moment. And we look at my mom, and she inhales. And exhales her final breath. And in that moment, it's, it's a very heavy moment, because this is now when the reality sets in of, like, this life just ended in front of my eyes. And we all don't think about that moment a lot, like, and it happens quick. And then the thought in my head was like, that's it. Like, that's it. Whatever dream she had, like, it was, it was done. And I mean, for me, it's like, it's weird because it's bittersweet because you have this moment where, yes, like, this person lost her life and it was difficult, but she was also in pain. Like, a lot of pain. So to see her go off to heaven was like a, a great feeling. And then I had this thought of like, man, like, what am, what am I going to have going on when I die. Like when I leave this earth, because it's going to happen. It's like, what's going to happen? Like genuinely in that moment, I thought this. Like, what are we going to do? Like, this is all it is. Like, if I created what I want, I'm in this fog right now. Is that what she wanted for my life? And it was this thought of like, no, like, who am I? It's a question like, who the hell are you, Ed? And I started thinking like all the stuff that's going on in my life, what she created, who she was and what she did. Numerically, I shouldn't exist, but there's a reason that I am on the stage doing what I do. And the reason is the woman you see on the screen right now. It's my mom. I have her name tattooed on my arm here. Thank you. I'm just, I'm redirecting the claps to her because those aren't for me. She loved me past crazy unconditionally. Like unconditionally, I was a bad little kid. And I had this thought in the back of my head like, dude, how did you love this crazy bad little kid? And the reality was that she just unconditionally loved me. Like, unconditional. Like, she was just, like, she just poured in. And it was to the level, like, for a while, I didn't want that love. Like, I don't, I want my real mom. And I want, I, and I was like, yeah, okay. And she just loved me. 
And I realized, like, the best way that I can live for this woman is to do the same thing for the world, to unconditionally love you through my actions, my work, my heart, which is why I love doing this. Thank you. And then the next one was like, how do I teach and go and take this? So like, I want to create something amazing. So I was like, I want to create this amazing, powerful, like, life. I want you to have a sunrise for what it is you do. Like, I want you to have this bright, beautiful life. And as you go through the kind of steps of it, here's what I want you to realize is there's a level of your life you've been operating under right now that's got you to here. Here could be good, but there's a new level for every single one of us, period. There's a space you want to get to. It's why you're in this room. So if you're sitting here thinking like, no, no, I'm cool, the door's right there, Right? You're here because there's another tier, another level, another impactful place for you to go. And to be honest, the world needs you to do that. Needs you to do it. I needed her. You, the world has somebody out there. You're someone to someone that you don't even know is watching you right now. Period. And you got to own that. So part of the own the ship is like owning the gift. Own the ship, but own the gift you got to do something great. And what has happened is we have this desire for a new life, a new, we'll call it hardware, but the problem is, our software is out of date. For me, the reason you saw my life fall apart was solely because I didn't update my software, my identity of who I was. I was still a football guy trying to do football stuff with a football mindset, trying to live a non-football life. Trying to build a business off of, well, I used to play and tackle people all day. And? There's new things you got to learn, develop, figure out. And so what happens is we're operating up this old software. Some of us from like childhood the last relationship, the business that failed, the person that talked bad about you on social media. You're stuck in this operating software. You get that spinning wheel of death. Who's got a Mac? I hate it. I'm like, I gotta edit the video. I'm like, did it save? Did it not save? Like, I gotta do it again. Oh, right? It's just, it's outdated. Software sucks. Or what ends up happening in your life right now is a pop-up comes and it says, hey, you want an update? No, 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 I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, let that set in real quick in the back. You better, whoa, oh, yeah, I see what he's saying. Right, because it's like, hey, you got to learn this thing. I don't want to learn that thing. You got to admit you're, you're wrong and be able to take some, you'll be more vulnerable. I don't, uh, don't want to do that. Right, so we keep clicking tomorrow, trying an hour, and we never do it. And all of a sudden, why is the spinning wheel of death going on? <laughs> yeah, right? So that's what we got to look at is how do we update the software? It's a way you can do it. The biggest thing that we don't see is what's called an identity gap. The gap shows up in a lot of places. The gap shows up in lack of self-belief, lack of self-confidence, lack of skill sets, self-sabotage. What it is, is there's a person you want to be. This is this guy over here. I have certain things. But what ends up happening is I am over here. You have certain things that you have right now, how you operate right now, but you want to have the things that that person has. It doesn't work that way. You have to be the person that has those things. And if you don't have that thing, there is a gap. Shows up in a lot of ways. Tend to be specific. We're not going to cover them today. Just realize you got a lot of things you got to figure out. But these gaps, when you close them, things become amazing. You get to live in this new space, this new person. And what I'm calling is, it's an ideal identity, right? This is my identity. This is who I am right now, what I have. And what the problem is, we'll fight to keep this person. We'll fight by like, no, 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 I don't want to go to that event. I don't want to learn that thing. And I don't do that. I don't make videos. I don't do website stuff. And we want to stay over here. But I want, want 40000 a month. Well, this person does all that. So if you want this, do that consistently. That's the thing you have to do. And the big question is like, well, it's over. What you create creates you. Right through the process of developing this whole, like when I was in high school, at the beginning of me playing, like I sucked. I was a skinny little kid. I could like suck in my stomach and put my hand under my ribs. Little itty bitty guy. I had no reason that I could be good at football. In fact, I sucked at football at first. Most people don't know this. I was bad. And what ends up happening is at this point where like I wanted to be faster, so I lifted the weights. I did what that guy does. I ate the right food. I ran the right routes. I practiced the play. I did all this and I created this stronger guy. Just he was more capable. And what ends up happening is that more capable guy, he goes to the field. He got this chip on his shoulder, like, oh, I got this. And when I came up to you, play for play, like a me against you, bro, I got you. You don't deserve to win. I did this. You didn't, you can't take this from me right now. I earned that back there in the dark when you didn't watch me do it. And when that becomes what you do, you create this person. That guy got to the field and balled out. 
I was smacking cats, catching balls. Like, I was the weird guy who had like a weird sleeve back when sleeves weren't the thing. I started that. I'll take it. Right? I had this, and people, I did it. I did it so other teams knew who I was. So they could watch me warm up and watch me look good and be scared when I hit that field. And I had the plays that made me this guy every day. But you got to earn it. You got to create this thing through pain and hardship and difficulty. What you're not seeing is everything we talk about on the stage. Like, you're seeing it, but you're not seeing it. It's in the work, not the strategy, not the tool. Do you show up and create that person because you want to have guaranteed success? I cannot guarantee you success. What I can guarantee is such a huge chip that success becomes guaranteed for you. It becomes your second nature. 